Welcome to this video on trig identities. In this video we'll look at what the two trig identities you need to know are and how to use them in questions. So in that five, there are two trig identities that you need to know off by heart. The first of which being sine squared plus cos squared is one. And the second being that tan is defined as being sine over cos. Let's start by looking at how we know these equations are true uh, and what's known as a proof. I should note before we start that you don't need to know these proofs, it's just nice to see that they are true and this skill is also useful, useful in the future of manipulating equations. Okay, so recall um, to write a standard right angle triangle and uh, the definition of sine being the opposite of the hypotenuse. This is a uh, nat 4 Socator. Uh, if you do a reminder of this, just it, uh, go back and check the intro to trig video that started off this video series. So if we set the hypotenuse equal to 1 for this triangle here, that means the sine's now just going to be equal to the opposite. So we can replace the opposite uh, with sine. And we can also do the exact same argument using cos. Um, and cos defines the adjacent of the hypotenuse. So we set that equal to 1, cos will just be equal to the adjacent. So when the hypotenuse is 1, essentially the opposite is just sine of the angle and the adjacent is just cos of the angle. And if we look at this triangle in terms of Pythagoras, um, we can see that c squared is um, the hypotenuse and a and b are the other two sides. And if we take the values of the triangle and put them into Pythagoras, we can see this just gives us that 1 squared is equal to cos squared plus sine squared, and 1 squared is just 1. So cos squared plus sine squared is just 1, and that is just the identity that we're trying to prove. And let's go on and do a little proof of tan x equals sine x over cos x. So recall on all three of the Socator relations, again if you want to recap this, just go back and check the intro to trig video. Then sine x over cos x is just the opposite of the hypotenuse, which is sine x, divided by cos x, which is just adjacent of the hypotenuse. We've just subbed in Socator values for sine and cos here. If you remember that but to divide by a fraction, all we need to do is type, flip it and times it. And we see here that um, there's now a hypotenuse on the top and the bottom of the combined fraction, so we can just go ahead and cancel them. So that leaves us with just the opposite of the adjacent, adjacent, which is just tan x. So we can see here that sine x or cos x is just tan x, which is the identity we're trying to prove. So that's a proof of each of the two identities. Now let's go on and use them in some examples. So let's move the equations to this side and get started. Let's have a look at some past paper questions that involve trig identities. And you'll notice that all of these are only worth two marks. So it's asking us to simplify tan squared x cos squared x. And the first thing we'll notice, since there's tan in the question, it's probably going to be this identity we use here. That tan x equals sine x over cos x. Okay, so let's take that and we'll write it down. And we're not looking for tan x, we're looking for tan squared x. So we'll first re remember the fact that tan squared x is just the same thing as tan x all squared. It's just squaring the whole thing. Um, so let's find what tan squared x is. So, not the definition we had before, tan squared is just um, this thing before, all squared. So we're just taking the expression of tan x, which is sine x for cos x, and just squared the whole thing. And remember that squaring a fraction is just the same as squaring the bottom and the top. We just, that means tan squared is just sine squared over cos squared. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put it into the equation that we're given at the start. Um, so now that's equal to, um, this, we're going to substitute in tan squared, so we're going to bring this down, and we're going to replace it with sine squared over cos squared, because that's what tan squared is equal to. And we've still got the cos squared from before. So all we've done is replace tan squared with the identity that we're given. Um, and we're just going to write it all as one fraction now. Um, and you, because we're multiplying together, we can try to all as one fraction. And we'll notice now there's a cos squared on top and the bottom, so we can just go ahead and cancel um, them off because cos squared might be cos squared is just one. And that leaves us with just sine squared, which is just the answer. And that's it done. Moving on to the next one. And this one's asking us to express sine x, cos x, tan x in the simplest form. So let's simplify it. So again, we notice that there's a tan x, so we'll go to tan x identity. So we'll write out the same thing as we had before, and we'll replace tan x with sine x over cos x. So we're just writing the same thing out, but we're substituting in our identity for tan and for the tan. And again, we'll get write it all as one fraction, because there's times together we can all write it as one fraction. And I'll extend the line across to show that it is all one fraction. And just like the last one, you see now there's a cos x on top and the bottom, so we can go ahead and cancel them, because cos x over cos x is just one, 
as we said before. And that's just the use us with sine x times sine x, which is just sine x all squared, which is just sine squared x. And again, that's us done. This one's a little bit easier, but it's worth the same amount of marks. And on to the next question, it's asking us to expand and simplify this bracket here. So let's just write it out. And we're squaring the whole bracket. Um, so you look at the question, you might not know where to start, not quite sure what identity we're going to use. It looks like it might be the bottom one, but I'm not sure yet. But the question just asking us to expand it, so let's start by doing that. We know how to expand the bracket squared. We just write the bracket out twice. And we just multiply each term by each term. This is called foil or rainbow. It's different schools called different things. Um, but let's just get started. So we do the first term of the first term, and that just gets sine times sine just gives us sine squared x. And sine x times the next one gives us um, sine x cos x. And cos times sine is just again sine x cos x. You can write the terms in either order you want, they're multiplied, so it doesn't matter. And the last term, cos x times cos x, just gives us cos squared x. Okay, let's just collect the terms together. So, first of all, I'm going to take um, sine squared x and cos squared x and write that first. You'll see why I did that in a second. Um, and the next step is to notice that these two terms here um, are just the exact same. So we just get 2 lots of sine x cos x. So that's like having a plus a, you just get 2a. And we'll notice here, the reason I wrote it in this order is because this here is just sine squared plus cos squared. And that is exactly our identity that we, um, we need to remember. So we can just replace that bracket with a 1. Because um, sine squared plus cos squared is just 1. So this whole thing is just 1. And then the, the 2 sine x cos x comes down. And that is just our answer. It's just 1 plus 2 sine x cos x. So this just shows if a question looks scary when you start it, don't worry. Just get started. Do what you know. So in this case, we just expanded. And the sine squared plus cos squared fell out. And we could just plug in identity at that point. We didn't have to know where we were going when we started. We just had to start and we'll do one last example, and I've taken this from BBC Bite Size, I'll leave the link in the description. And it's a slightly different type of question. This question we're trying to prove something. And what you have to do is you need to take the left hand side and prove it as equal to the right hand side. So we'll write down the left hand side, which is just cos A plus sin A over cos A. And the first thing we notice it is that there's a tan A in the answer, which means we're probably going to have to use a tan identity. And indeed we can, we can see that in the left hand side, there's a sine A over cos A, so we probably can use identity, but not quite yet because um, they're both part of our fraction and we need to get rid of the other cos A first before we can sub it in. So let's split up the fraction. Let's um, split it up in a cos A over cos A plus sine A over cos A. And we can do this because just like we're going to add in um, together fractions to the same denominator, you can just combine the numerators and the denominator stays the same. We're just going backwards. We're just splitting up the fraction and writing it as two separate fractions, which is perfectly fine. Um, and you'll notice that the first one here is just a 1. Um, so this is just 1 plus. And the second one in here is just our tan identity. So we can replace it with tan A because sine A or cos A is just tan A. The, the X and the A, um, you can just interchange them, it doesn't really matter. And um, that's us done. There we go. 1 plus tan A. That's us finished. This topic is quite a short topic, and all the questions are only worth around about two marks in your exams. And this is why a lot of teachers just don't teach it, because they think it's a little bit too hard and it's not worth the effort. But as we've seen here, as long as you give it a bash, a lot of time, the identities will make themselves clear to you, and you can get the marks. Um, other than that, why else do we care? Um, well, if you plan on going to STEM at all, this, gear, this scale appears through all of STEM. Um, I do this daily in my kind of career as a physicist. Um, using identities and expressions to simplify equations is kind of how it make, makes math manageable. Um, it makes our equations much, much simpler and easier to deal with. Um, it lets us express things in terms of other things we need. And perhaps slightly more relevant to you, at least in the immediate future, is you're going to do harder trig identities next year. This brings us to the end of the video. It was a shorter video. Um, but that's, again, it's a short topic. Um, I hope you find this useful.